Yeah, I'm trying to. Oh wow, he flew very far. In an update where it feels like most classes got disgustingly good, a lot of top players currently think Ogren is leading the pack as the strongest in Dark Tide in its current form. Unlike Vet or Psyker, where only certain builds feel hugely impactful into Auric and Maelstrom, Ogren has powerful elements in basically every facet of the game right now. So the focus of today's video is on the Bulgren, that classic slab shield Grenadier Gauntlet Bruiser. It's fun thematically, and it is really good right now. So on this, what is essentially a god rolled slab shield, we've got Flak, Infested, Skullbreaker, and Brutal Momentum. Flak lets you one hit four bruisers to the head simultaneously, and Infested straight up mulches Poxwalker hordes, while also letting you one shot dogs to the head. This is a weapon that used to deal basically no damage, now it hits extremely hard, and that's due to a confluence of factors. Number one, bleed was buffed out the ass. Base bleed damage went up from 40 to 200, and max bleed stacks went from 8 to 14 to 10 to 16. You probably felt it already, bleed is viable on a lot of builds, but I think shield ogren might be one of the best for it. So 16 is max stacks, you can apply that with 3 heavies, and so in mixed hordes of elites and pox walkers and groaners and maniacs and everything in between, you're applying bleed in a wide area while headshotting with brutal momentum, and it only takes a handful of swings before everything starts dropping. That's not counting boss DPS, which is also really good with bleed. So if you're in absolutely terrible situations, which are very common in Auric and Maelstrom, shield is one of those weapons that can help turn the tide when things get really, really bad. And here's a good example. 10 Maulers on Damnation. I have no teammates, so remember that a big part of the shield synergy is helping your team out, but I don't really need a team here. Gonna hit the first couple with a fully charged heavy to the dome. If I see an enemy attack's about to land, Gonna taunt to stagger and apply that 25% extra damage effect. You can stack that up with an additional 15% for anything you hit. And after only a couple swings, everything starts dropping. And of course, if it got really, really bad, and a demon host and say eight crushers were thrown in the mix, I could just hit the weapon special while they're all taunted. And as long as my team is competent and able to kill things, I'm in zero danger. That kind of control and damage together is not easy to find in any of the tide games. It's basically a callback to Ironbreaker from Vermintide, a class that is still a powerhouse to this day. As any self-respecting bulwark should, Grenadier Gauntlet is your second best friend, pairs extremely well with a the theme and efficiency in battle as well. Pinpointing target got a huge buff, it's the best blessing for Gauntlet, it can be paired with Glory Hunter for toughness buffs when you kill elites, which Grenadier Gauntlet's very good at killing, or Shattering Impact for better crusher and boss damage. When it comes to the talents, there's one annoying hindrance to your builds, and that is this node right here, Soften Them Up. It's one of the best on the entire tree. If you're power gaming, you really don't want to skip it, but it completely cuts you off from rocks, which I actually think are more fun than the big bomb, because you get more uptime and use out of them. So a legit top tier shield build would pick this node up, as would basically any ogre build you could possibly make right now, but I personally skip it sometimes because I like big ol' rocks. One thing you're probably going to notice is that a lot of really good Ogren players generally just path down to the bottom left of the Skullbreaker tree, whether they're playing Gunlugger or Bulgren or Skullbreaker itself, and that's because those talents in Keystone are just bananas insane. That is not to say you can't make Bulgren or Gunlugger Keystones work just great. You absolutely can. Again, there are so many potential builds here. We're still finding things out. We're still discovering. But I do think the bottom left of the tree is the strongest elements of Ogren right now. Batter up for the heavy bleed stacking and the damage resist you get from Delight and Destruction shores up your holes and inarguably gives you more power in the facets you would traditionally lack or feel weaker in if you were to just path down one specific tree. Those nodes supercharge your melee and make you feel unkillable in situations where a lot of other classes would just crumble out. Now, I do need to be clear, I do not think Slab Shield with the middle tree is the strongest Ogren build right now. That honor belongs to either Skullbreaker or Gunlugger with the Mark IV Cleaver, which can do so many nasty things right now that it's deserving its very own video. But there's no question the run-saving potential and combination of support and pain the Slab Shield and Grenadier Gauntlet can bring 
is a game changer, particularly compared to how they used to play in. It can keep you and your team alive in situations that would otherwise be impossible. There's a lot of really good examples of that coming up in the next few minutes on Maelstrom Damnation, so enjoy the gameplay, and I'll talk to you soon. Things are getting a little wild at Caillou's house. That's why I bring rocks, dude. Oh, look, don't get me wrong. Nuclear bombs, legalize them immediately. Legalize nuclear bombs. But at the end of the day, rock. I don't need to add any more logic, any more arguments to the to the equation here. Rock. They make me happy, Jene. Goodbye, my friend. You shall be missed. Rock! That's that break point right there. Literally one shot to the head on dogs. That's a pretty big deal. Like that's a really nice break point to hit if you have infested on your slab shield. Not a big fan of that. Right, I'ma drop. I mean, need I say more? The results speak for themselves. Taunts all that. Stagger them. They're all on me. And now I'm scared. It's one of those areas of, of map where it's just like clearly not designed to have this much armor coming your way. Oh no, the demon house is right there. Oh, an aggro! Oh! It's a good thing we have a slab shield, huh? So, this is a situation where I have to rely on my team. I've done everything I'm supposed to do here. There's like five crushers, five berserkers, ten maulers all on me. The big question is, will my team come to help? Right now, they are not. I imagine they're dealing with their own stuff, but I'm not seeing a lot in the kill feed right now, which has me a little bit concerned. Like, what are they fighting? <laughs> Maybe the horde? Please help me! I literally cannot move right now, for obvious reasons. Now, the good thing is, corruption from the demon host can only go so far. I believe it's like 40. My hero! It's like 40 or 45%. Uh, I guess what... One of our players went to go res. I wonder if they'll decide to come back and they're gonna hang out. I do have one friend. Zella with the chain axe. Killed everything for me. Appreciate that, my dude. Yeah, there's no reason to risk it right now, right? Like, just let him finish it. 
I'd love to stack up some bleed on it, but this is one thing I have not practiced a lot, fighting Demon Host 1v1. I'm not gonna take any damage as long as I'm holding blocks, so we're fine. It will die. Yeah, I mean, if I was playing any other class there, there's no way I survive. There's nowhere, there's nowhere to kite. Kobe. Here we go. Here we go. This is where that scab melee elite only kind of thing gets crazy. Oh yeah. How many crushes is that? How many ogres is that? Are you everybody fucking run? And you know why he's scared? But he shouldn't be. I mean I'm a little bit scared. But, I mean, if I don't screw up here... Yeah, keep them taunted in the fire. This thing, by the way, melts stuff, as you can see. Emulation grenades are awesome. It's easy. It's, e it's light work. It's light work. Before patch, something like that is death. 's are not the most interesting there have been better ones in vermintide there are some weapons right now that are extremely strong in dark tide that like at least from a weapon combo perspective aren't super interesting to use like the way you use shield is heavy 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 Well, I don't find myself carrying all that much just because there's just so much danger in these Auric and Maelstrom missions and modifiers that, like, breakpoint, then it's fine, right? Because you're, you're, you're having fun anyway. Like, sure, a little bit more complexity on the weapons would be good. But I'm playing Ogren. We don't need tons of complexity. We just need to bash. And bring the pain. Which it absolutely does now. Oh, I can't believe it. I missed that. That would have such a good clip. <laughs> After all that. That will stop mutant charges. Get 
Getting huge value out of the rocks this game. Deleted. Oh my god. I've never even heard. I've never heard that laugh before. <laughs> that was crazy. You're not getting away. Can't move! Alright, we're in danger. Alright, this dickhead just debated me three times. That's actually insane! Well, that was like Reggie Bush Heisman jukes. He fainted it. Oh no. He fainted a charge like three times in a row. I didn't know when to dodge. Alright, well, boss. Is there. All right, all right. Do a little loop. Gotta get rid of that trapper. Push! Oh my god, I hate bombers so much! Bombers are 100% my least favorite special. Most punchable faces in the entire roster, no question. Okay, that was a little bit rough. I am really liking being able to one-shot dogs. I would not have considered that like an incredibly important breakpoint, and maybe it's not, but it feels really good to not have to just push them around and hit them six times before they finally drop. Yeah, I think Infested is really overlooked. On stuff like the Antax as well, it's really, really nice to have. Because, I mean, they're the most ho common horde enemies in the game. And being able to hit breakpoints to- oh, hi. To one-shot them more often is... A really big deal. Say nothing of the doggos, obviously. 
God, this setup is so freaking good. Like you hit gunners once, maybe twice, and they just all die to bleed. It's also one of the worst spots in the entire game. Like I've wiped here so many times since beta. So yeah, I think dropping the meds there is the right call. I have not played this map since the up before the update though, so I feel like with bubble and taunt and all that, you've got more tools to survive this situation. But this drop down right here is brutal. Someone's gonna die here for sure. Oh yeah, well, I didn't, I didn't even notice him. <laughs> Well, he's already dead. Yeah, half the problem is they can shoot you from below. So we kind of need this cover here, use this wall. Keep killing, get some stuff to aggro. I think it's low. Oh, they're getting wrecked by that sniper, man. It's not dead yet? Oh my, oh my god. Well, my team's dead. Oh, hi. I actually had no idea he was here. That's useful. I cannot jump over any railings with Ogren. I do not know why. I don't remember this being such an issue. Okay, that could have been a lot worse. Pick him up, pick him up. Get him, get him. That's actually pretty sick. He does the chanting and then I res. Armor coming up. Stack up the bleeds. Yeah, with the fully charged heavy, you get 40% impact, you can knock down crushers, which is pretty awesome. That was cool. Man. Kill us, then we need to drop. Beautiful. It's a beautiful dive there, Poxhound. There's so many, dude. Oh, 
What's happening? That's unfortunate. Help them. Can you not levitate to your feet? Are you blind or foolish? We're alive. Let it be so. 